Hi, and welcome to a TMMI video presentation. Today, we want to talk about using Prophecy Machine Edition with Profinet and the GERSTIIO. Our objectives will be to add a Profinet drop to an existing RX3i PAC controller using the GERSTI Profinet scanner and associated I.O and we want to be able to understand how to configure Prophecy Machine Edition to add this Profinet network. The assumptions we have are today that we are using Prophecy Machine Edition 8.6. To start off with, I have an existing Prophecy Machine Edition project and I want to add the Profinet controller to this project here in my hardware configuration. I'm going to do that by double clicking on slot 6 which will bring up the module catalog and then I'm going to select bus controller and down at the bottom of my list I can see that I have the Profinet controller. By double clicking on that it will add the Profinet controller module to my rack. Now that the module has been added you can see the properties I have for my Profinet controller here. Profinet is a name-based rather than a IP address-based system. So the device name for my controller is going to be IOLAN-Controller01. If you had multiple controllers, it might be 02, for example. And you can see that the range of IP addresses that will be served up by this controller to the associated devices start at the 192.168.0.1 and go to the 254 address range. From here what I'd like to do is right click on my Profinet controller and add an I.O. device. And here is my Profinet device catalog. Since we're going to be working with RSTI I.O. I can click here and see that there's where my Profinet scanner is available to me. I will double click on that and it will add my Profinet scanner to my drop under my Profinet controller. If I click on my scanner, you'll notice up here under the device name, it comes up by default and says it's the STXPNS001 is the model number and it says dash address here in the field. Now, what is the address I need for my device? If you look at this photo I have here of a Profinet scanner, you can see I have two rotary switches. And the dash address will be these rotary switches. So in my particular example here, I have 0 and 1. And you can kind of see that here under the device name where it shows the part number dash XX. So now that I see that my address for my device is 0, 1, I can go back over here to the device name and then add the 01 here to my address. And that provides the name to my Profinet scanner. Okay. From here what we'd like to do is add the modules or the actual I.O. to our Profinet drop. And we do this by right clicking on it and choosing change module list. And this brings up a list of all the different Profinet uh, I.O. modules that are available. And looking back on my Profinet drop, I have written down the I.O. modules. And my first I.O. module is a discrete input. And it is a model number of an ST1218. And I simply click on that and drag and drop it into my system. My next module is a 3214, it's an analog input. Let's go look at my 3214, here it is, drag and drop it into the system. My next module is a 4212, that's my analog output, and here's my 4212, I can drag and drop it into my system. And the last module I have is a discrete output card which is a 2328, ST2328. And there it is. I drop it into my system. 
Now that I have the modules listed here, I'm going to click OK, and when I do, you'll see them added here to my hardware configuration. So I'll click OK on that, and if we open up, we can now see all the modules that I've added to my system. At this point, we need to double click on our modules to check the reference addresses that were assigned to each of them. For example, on my input module, it looks like it's taking up reference address percent %I49 with a length of 8. If I look at my analog input module, it's starting at analog input percent %I1 with a length of 4. My analog output is percent %AQ1 with a length of 2. And finally, my discrete output is percent %Q17 with a length of 8. So now that we've dropped that into our system, let's go over and look at the Profinet Discovery Tool. I'm going to click on my Discovery Tool, and I'm going to change it here from Bluetooth Connection to Local Area Connection, and I'm going to hit Refresh Device List. This will go out and scan all of my Profinet devices that I have on my Profinet network, and let me see what they look like. So as you can see, I have two devices out there. The first one is my actual Profinet controller, IOLAN controller 1, and you see the part number here. You can see I also have the Profinet drop and the associated IP addresses that will be assigned to those devices. If I want to identify my devices, I can highlight a device and I can hit identify. And when I click on the Identify, it will make the lights on my Profinet controller flash in kind of a ring pattern so you can see which device you're looking at. So if you have multiple devices, you can highlight them here, hit Identify Device, and then be able to see which device is actually out in your system. It's kind of a neat tool. The important thing to remember to make this work is that your Profinet controller must be connected to the local area LAN as well, at least for this part of the configuration. Once you get it all set up, you can disconnect it and have it just be on its own. But for this uh, discovery tool to work, it needs to be tied together for at least for the initial configuration. So now that we have our Profinet set up here, I'm going to go ahead and click my lightning bolt to go online with my system. And I can see down here at the bottom that I'm in monitor mode, run e enable, logic equal, configuration not equal. So let's stop our controller. And what I'm going to do is download to the system. And I'll send my hardware configuration, my logic, and my initial force values. The name doesn't match, so we'll say proceed. And it builds my system, checks for error, and downloads. Now we can see that we are configuration equal and logic equal down here on the bottom, and that we've added our Profinet LAN. Now let's say that we want to have, for example, for a simple program now, if we wanted to take the very first card here, which is at I-49, and have it turn on, say, the very first output, which is at Q-17. We could simply go ahead and program that into our system by going to our main block, adding a normally open contact, and we can go into the test edit mode, and we'll say this one has to be 49I, and hit enter, and we need to tie that to a coil that is going to be at 17Q for example. And then we want to send that down to our PLC to accept the edit. This little piece of logic will, when I turn on the push button that's tied to I-49, it will turn on the output. And it will be just as easy to set that up. Of course we need to put our PLC in the run mode to do that. In my particular case I'm just simply going to force it on. So I'm going to right click and force it on and then I can see when I force it on my output goes on and then looking behind me I can see the light on my very first light on my output card here the ST2328 is lit. So that's as, as about as easy as it gets to set up a remote IO drop with Profinet. So a few things I want to uh, remind you for some key takeaways. 
First off is that uh, Profinet is a name based for its devices rather than IP address based. So you want to make sure that you get your names correct to make it work properly. Secondly, to use the discovery tool, the Ethernet LAN and the Profinet LAN must be connected. And finally, Profinet is an open standard. So you can use lots of other manufacturers' devices with your GE system. All you need to do is go to their website and download the uh, Profinet GSDML file and add that into your system. Thanks for watching.